Flyer is a team of currently 80 data scientists and engineers. 95% of us are technical. That's very intentional. When we work with airlines, we go in as engineers and data scientists. We have no sales staff. Um, we have offices in San Francisco, Poland, and the Middle East. Um, we're backed by some major venture capitalists like Peter Thiel and some strategics like JetBlue. Um, and we work with airlines to deploy our continuous dynamic pricing solutions in production, um, uh, several in the US, Europe, uh, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East. All right, so what are our core capabilities as Flyer? What is it we do? Uh, it kind of boils down to four core focuses. First, we go to the airline and we identify all the different data sources that they have under that control, the systems where they're kept in, the owners of that data, and we integrate it into one standardized data warehouse in a standardized data format. Second, we take all this data and we do four types of machine learning. First, we forecast demand. Second, elasticity or willingness to pay. Third, inventory levels or cancellations, changes, and no shows. And fourth, product relevancy. What are the ancillary products or, or other products that are most relevant for a given shopping request? And then fourth, we provide backwards compatibility of our systems into the airline's PSS and distribution channels. So continuous dynamic pricing at Flyer. At its core to us, continuous dynamic pricing means answering a shopping request with a most relevant offer and price in real time. Essentially, it boils down to five parts. First, availability to us is binary. Either you're selling or you're not selling. And if you're selling, there is a price at which you are willing to sell. Second, the pricing is computed in real time uh, at the time of the shopping request. Third, we consider what the customer has in a shopping cart or the ancillary products they're selecting, as well as who they are as part of the pricing decisions. Fourth, we use new kinds of indicators of new kinds of data sources to help derive demand and elasticity better than before. And fifth, we establish the inventory levels or the inventory forecast on every individual PNR opposed to more generic oversell limits. So let's talk a little bit more about the forecasts. The three core forecasts that are driving our pricing decisions are demand, elasticity, and inventory levels. Demand, we forecast in the form of shopping arrival rate. We don't forecast it as bookings intentionally because historical bookings were the result of many factors. So we start by forecasting shopping arrival rate by origin destination across the different channels. Second, we forecast elasticity, and the way you can think of elasticity is it is a conversion rate against a shopper at various price points over time to departure. And unlike doing it at a, at a couple of different price points for, let's say, economy, um, we can do this at 200 price points for every single day up until departure on the itinerary level. There are combinations of specific flight numbers and segments that get yourself from point, point A to point B. And then third, we forecast inventory or availability where every single PNR that exists in the airlines PSS has its own forecast for the propensity of cancellation, change, or no-show. So I'm going to go a little bit more technical, talk about our architecture. So what makes up our continuous dynamic pricing infrastructure? So first, we have the data piece. I already mentioned this earlier. Um, the data piece means we consume all these data sources. PNR feeds, schedules, historical fare filings, historical RBD snapshots, competitive pricing, EMDs. We put all this data in real time through a data pipeline that standardizes all these data formats into our standardized format. So every airline we work with, these data sources are structured the same. It can get much easier for our team to work with that data. From there, we move forward to the machine learning based forecasting. We forecast demand, elasticity, an inventory, like I mentioned earlier, and we store this in a high-performance cache. From there, we do a network optimization. Um, and what's really unique about our network optimization is that we do it twice a day, but in addition, when there's a meaningful change event, let's say a group booking comes in of 50 passengers, our data pipelines are actually identifying this change, are identifying or grabbing the subset of the airline's network that is impacted because of this change, in the context of network optimization, and reruns the network solver in a matter of minutes. 
This generates what we call a base price, or a price for a given shopping request if all else is equal. And then last, we can do a discount or markup um, based on what is in the customer's shopping cart or based who they are. And examples of this could be giving discounts on ancillary, it could be giving discounts because of their loyalty program, or dynamically establishing cash plus miles type ratios. Now, one other thing we do that is becoming more and more important, you're already seeing this with some of the low costs, and it's becoming more relevant for the full fare carriers as well, is dynamic fare families. So when we build up our data infrastructure for the airline, we essentially create a SKU or a product for every product the airline could potentially sell on its own. So while today the airline works mostly in the form of fare families, we have the ability to essentially assemble that fare family or a fare family based on the individual underlying components in real time. And because we're forecasting very flexibly as well, we can dynamically price this fare family um, at the same time. This dynamic fare family and dynamic pricing is then pushed into the PSS or the commerce platform of the airline um, during the shopping flow, both on direct channels as well as on indirect channels. But the last thing I want to talk about is distribution. Um, so our pricing engine generates a final price in real time, right? The shopping request goes to an answered price or a price answer. Now from there, the airline has a diversity, a great diversity of distribution options and methods. Uh, I'll talk about ATPCO a little bit more, because we can distribute this price into ATPCO, we can distribute it through NDC, or we can return more traditional RBD availability levels in real time. But to dig a little bit deeper on ATPCO and how we work with ATPCO. So our forecasts are essentially establishing what do we believe the distribution of fares that customers are going to be shopping for in the next week, the next three days, the next day, whatever time frame you set, what do those fares look like? And by knowing this information, we can dynamically look at the airline's filed fare ladder and optimize this fare ladder to better reflect what we expect customers are willing to pay in the next period X. And we're working with ATPCO and Bridge Labs to enable some of these capabilities uh, and expand on these as Bridge Labs itself also expands its capability. Thank you so much.